Hey guys, Tristan Parker here. Now today I'm gonna to show you step-by-step step how you can create your very own filterable image gallery on your WordPress website. And it's gonna be fully responsive too, so it's gonna look good on mobile, tablet, and desktop. Now if that's something that you're looking to do to your website, stick around. So as a website designer or a business owner, it wasn't that long ago that in order to create a filterable gallery on your website, you'd have to depend on a bunch of jQuery plugins or JavaScript and just a bunch of code. And it was very difficult to achieve. Now, fast forward a few years, we now have a bunch of tools at our disposal, such as Elementor and WordPress. Now with Elementor Pro's page builder, we can create a filterable image gallery in literally a few clicks. And today I'm going to show you how you can do that for your business. So if you are a web designer or a business owner that are looking to have a portfolio on your website, you're going to find this super beneficial. Now, all you're going to need in order to do this is WordPress and Elementor Pro. Unfortunately, it's not going to work with the free version guys, but the pro version is only 49 bucks and it's going to save you a bunch of time. So I definitely recommend that you go and get that one. Now, before we jump on the computer, I just wanted to say that over 70% of you guys watching my content have not yet subscribed. So please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification as well if you want to be notified of future releases. And there are a bunch of other videos on this channel for you to go and check out. It's all about upping your website design game and improving your business. So yeah, go and check that out. Now, without further ado, let's jump on the machine and get started. Okay, cool guys. So here is an example of what we are going to be producing today. So here is an actual client website that I'm working on at the moment. I had to put this gallery together and that's exactly what prompted me to put this video together because I wanted to show you how easy this really is. So as you can see, scrolling down, we have a ton of just images here. You can click on one and it nicely loads in a light box. So yeah, really awesome. Scrolling back up, what's better is each one of these are filterable. So we can define categories and then organize the images into those categories. And then it allows the user to filter through. So if you had a portfolio that wanted to display different types, then you can do this quite easily. Now, in order to get started, you're gonna need Elemental Pro. Now, if you're not sure what Elemental is, then basically it's a drag and drop page builder that's designed for WordPress and it just makes producing websites so much easier. Now, if you're not familiar with it, there are tons of videos on this channel where I talk you through how to produce websites using Elementor. And I do have a video coming up pretty soon that talks through all the basics of Elementor in around 20 minutes. So yeah, definitely keep an eye out for that as well. But basically what you wanna do is head to elementor.com and then hit the get started button. Pricing wise, as I mentioned in the intro, we're looking at 49 US dollars for one site. If you are a designer that you know wants to produce multiple websites using Elementor, then I definitely recommend the expert level. Uh, you get a thousand sites, which is ridiculous. Now, I just want to be clear, I'm not affiliated with these. I'm not trying to market them. I just, I really believe in them and I think it's a great product. Now let's just head back over to our WordPress dashboard. So from here, once you've got Elementor installed, we just want to go to pages and we're going to start creating a new page. Cool. So as I mentioned, this is an active site that I'm currently working on. So I'm just going to add a new page just for this demo. And let's just call it website gallery. Cool. And then once you've given it a name, you want to hit publish or you can save it as a draft if you're not ready to publish it yet. But in this instance, I'm just going to publish it. The site is not live. It's just one that I'm currently working on. Cool, once that's published or saved to draft, you wanna hit this edit with Elemental button. I wouldn't worry too much about the content here. We're just gonna dive straight into Elemental. All right, sweet. This is currently how it's looking. I'm not gonna to spend too much time um, messing around with the styles. If you do find yourself in a position where you wanna get rid of this title, just nice and quick, you can head down to settings here and then click hide title. If you turn it on, it's just gonna make it disappear like so. Now. From our canvas, the first thing we want to do is add a container. So click the plus and then we're going to go with a full width container here. And then you're just going to insert that like so. And then in order to add our gallery, we want to head up to the, the nine dots and that's going to bring up all of the widgets that are available to us. Now you have your basic widgets here and you have the pro ones that are available. So this falls under the pro one, which is why you need to have Elemental Pro installed. 
and we're just going to click on the gallery option here you can see it's all nice and tiled we're going to click that and drag it onto our canvas okay sweet so once that's in the first thing you want to do is define whether you want a single type gallery or whether you want a multiple now in this instance we're going to go with multiple because we want to be able to attach multiple galleries and that's going to allow us to filter through the different categories so let, let me just show you so once you click multiple and the, the galleries list changes you have an option to add another one here like so you want to click into the first one if you haven't done so already i'm going to give this a title so let's go with signage in this example and then we want to click the plus button and what that's going to do is going to load our media library now you can either find images on your computer and drag them onto this screen and it's going to upload them or you can click upload files select files and just locate them and upload them to your media library here we have the uh, images already uploaded so let's just scroll down and um, what I want to do is I'm just going to select a bunch of these so choose the first one that you want to select and then you can click and hold shift and it's going to select them all like so it's a little bit easier than going through and clicking each individual one then what you want to do is click and add a new gallery and it's going to chuck all of those into your gallery and from here if you want you can change the order of things like so once you're happy head down to the bottom and click insert gallery and you'll see that all of those 22 images are now uh, input and we have our gallery here like so now what's cool is you can see that the signage option has already appeared now we have an all option and a signage option and by default this all option will always appear when you have multiple galleries so that's awesome and if I click signage nothing's going to happen just yet because we need to add another gallery so let's move on to our second gallery this time I'm going to call this one um, vehicles click the plus again now within our gallery I've already got the images uploaded so I can just go and locate all of the vehicles shift and click and it's going to select all of the vehicles and I click add new gallery like so you can remember you can click and drag to change the order of these if you want to and then we're going to click insert gallery and there you go now you can see that we have vehicles up here as well and if I scroll down you'll see that vehicles have been added underneath all of the signs next let's just add a third one to show you what we're going to go with let's go uh, let's go with print um yeah we're just going to select a, a bunch of these wall prints we're going to add those and there you go it's added print now to the categories list so when i click these now you'll see that it starts filtering them just going to show all of the print images all of the signage images and if i click all it's going to display all of them oh all. there we go and there we go it's going to start displaying everything and it has a nice like lazy load effect that it will start loading more images as you get further down the page which is, means that it's not going to impact your page load speed um, which a lot of people have trouble with when they're producing their own galleries um, like I said in the beginning it requires like a bunch of different plugins to handle the different things so yeah this is really nice and slick and you can see that it's literally been less than I don't know five minutes maybe ten minutes and we have a functioning gallery in here now you'll see that the lazy load option is on I think we need to keep that on as I just said it helps with page speed and um, something that you might want to consider is the type of layout that you've got so we're using grid at the moment and you can see that each image is the same width and height now if you click justified it's going to change them like so but the one that I like the most is masonry yeah I think it's nice and big it just it allows you to see most of the image and it just gives a nice sort of like tiled effect I think it looks really smart now one thing you've probably noticed is all of the images are pretty low resolution here as I'm you know going through them they're all a bit grainy and the way to fix that is by changing our image size so currently we've got it at medium 300 by 300 so it's loading a small resolution image and stretching it to fit the container now you'll see that we've got four columns here 
one, two, three, four. If you wanted to change that to three, it's gonna change that like so. And if you wanna change it to five, it's gonna make them a little bit smaller. But because we're using four, we've got this grainy effect taking place within each image. And we can fix that by just changing our image resolution. Now you could go with medium large and see how that looks. Already that looks so much better. The images are not pixelating and it's nice and clear. And if we just click on any image, it's gonna load it in our light box for us. So really, really smart. And it loads the source image in the light box. So you don't need to worry about distortion when you click and make the image larger. Cool, so moving on, we've got the option to make amends to our filter bar. So we can change the label to, of all to, I don't know, everything. I'm not sure if you'd really wanna name it that, but if you wanted to change the name of it, you could, but essentially, I think all is a good one. You can change the pointer to underline. That's gonna give it an overline. Um, you've got double line. I definitely recommend you go and have a little play with these. But I'm gonna keep underline because I quite like that one. And you can change the uh, animation. So if I click slide, you'll see that this now slides in, which looks quite smart. If I click drop in, let's see what that does. There we go, see. You can just change the uh, the hover effect, which is quite nice. And then we've got overlay. You can um, basically say whether you want a title to come in. So if you have an image title and you hover over the image, it's gonna bring those in. Now these image titles are not great, so I've opted to, to not display them, but you have the option there if you want to. Now before we finish up, I'm just gonna quickly run you through some of the styling options that we have. So head up to the top and click the style tab. And then from here, you can change the border color if you wish, the border width. Uh, you can add border radius to the images if you like. Doesn't really work with the masonry effect, but you know, it's your website, you can do as you please. And you've got hover animations, um, animation duration, and things like that. You can change the, the overlay if you wanted to. So if I wanted to change that to, say, a red, you, you, can, you can do so. Now let's assume that you want to go with red, you just lower the opacity. So it just changes the tint on top of the images if you wanted an overlay on there, that is. Now I don't want an overlay, so I'm just going to delete this and remove it from there. So I just want all of my images to display naturally. And you can go as far as just changing some of the content if you wanted to, so the alignment of like the title inside, things like that, you can change the hover effects. Um, but ultimately where most of the styling is going to take place is probably in this filter bar. So you can change your text color. So let's say I wanted the text color black as well. And hover wise, you can change the pointer color but hover, I want to change the text color as well, like so. So yeah, you've got a couple of options here. You've got um, you know, space between each of the uh, items. You can increase the gap between the items and the gallery. So yeah, loads of, loads of options. Now, one thing I forgot to mention was how do we make this responsive? And it's stupidly easy. So this is obviously the desktop view. And if we want to see how this looks on other devices, we can head down to the responsive mode and hit tablet. And from here, it's done most of the work for you. It's figured out that it's a tablet device. And what it's done is it's, it's changed it to a two column view. And if you wanted to make any amends on that, you'd head back over to content. And you'll see here that we are now on a tablet view and it's changed from four columns to two columns. So if you wanted to change that to three columns, you can do so. And it's not going to affect the des desktop view. As you can see, it's now gone back to four columns. So finally, if we head down to mobile, it's placed everything in one column. You'll notice that this has collapsed quite a bit. So what we can do is we can head back over to style and get a filter bar and we can just reduce the space between like so. And there we go. On a mobile device, you can now filter through. So let's head back up to desktop. Click this little arrow on the right hand side of the toolbar and it's going to give us how the gallery looks uh, sort of in live real time. So scrolling down, everything's loading sweet. It's loading in the light box. So we've got a fully functioning filterable image gallery here guys and it's taking no time at all. So you can see how much quicker it is using this tool versus using um, real code or 
old school JavaScript and PHP and CSS and all of that stuff that we once upon a time used to have to do. So there you go guys, hopefully you found that super valuable. Just to recap, I've shown you how to create a filterable image gallery on WordPress using Elementor, how you can style it, and how you can make it look good on mobile devices as well. So you should be set to go. Now as a web designer or a business owner looking to implement a gallery on their website, then hopefully you've been able to do that now. I'd love to hear from you guys and see how you got on. Drop me a comment down in the comment section. And if you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you'll be notified of future releases. Also, there's loads of other videos on this channel that are designed to help you up your website design game as well as your business. So absolutely go and check those out. That's it for now guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.